it is so inspiring and so important to be going to talk about uh, stress, how to deal with it, what are the best techniques to overcome and everything about stress with the Professor P. Professor, could you please introduce yourself and what do you do for business? Hello, Noor. Thank you for having me on here. Um, so I primarily am a stress relief specialist, and I help people overcome their self-imposed uh, barriers to success through uh, different techniques that I help them uh, work through. And why did you start or why did you shift into this uh, career? Well, uh, it actually started back in... Oh, 2008. It was uh, at that time, it was a perfect storm of stressful activities that uh, culminated in my diagnosis with stress induced diabetes. However, back then, I didn't listen to my body or, you know, what stress was doing to it. And for another 10 years, I, um, I basically continued to, to burn myself out until I ended up in the hospital in the emergency room with a severe case of diabetic ketoacidosis. And for your listeners uh, who don't know what that is, my body was eating itself alive because of my stress. And so I realized I better change at that point or else uh, I wouldn't be around much longer. My body was telling me that enough was enough. Sorry for that, doctor. Yeah, could you explain more about what the reasons are for stress? What are the main re main reasons? Well, what happens is is that uh, there's there's different types of stress. Um, not all stress is bad. Good stress, uh, which is also known as U stress, that is uh, the kind of stress that we're actually. Um, beneficial because it's the kind of stress that helps us get done with timelines, deadlines, uh, work that we're passionate about that we can get things done. Where stress really starts to affect us negatively is either through rumination, which is worrying about something that happened in the past that you cannot change and you keep putting, you know, beating yourself up about it, or anxiety about something in the future for which it hasn't happened and you're worrying that the worst case could happen. So those are the uh, examples of what negative stress is. And when we continuously uh, subject ourselves to that negative stress, what ends up happening is our body gets inundated with cortisol and adrenaline continuously uh, hitting us. And what ends up happening is at some point, if we don't get some balance and, and, and do things to re reduce our stress, what's gonna happen is, is that the weakest link in your body is gonna break down. What are the main ways to overcome stress? Well, what you can do is uh, you can, th there's very simple activities that one can do. The first thing that I think is, is to be mindful of it. Uh, and a lot of people, they need to, to realize that uh, their bodies are going to tell them that something is wrong. And so that might be something like as simple as back and shoulder stiffness. It might be something like frequent headaches. Maybe your stomach is bothering you frequently because of your stress. Um, maybe your weight's going up or down rapidly. Those kind of things are indicators that you are stressed and you should listen to your body. But if you don't listen to your body, what's gonna happen is, is it's going to break down at some point. Mentally, we also have uh, problematic issues such as uh, forgetting, you know, or, or losing our concentration. We might be uh, reverting to drug or alcohol addiction to, to help calm us down. And those are things that are, are not recommended. And again, it's, it's, it's your body, your mind telling you that you need to do something to take care of yourself. So being mindful is very, very important. How important or how, uh, how effective is having a strong mentality, having a strong mindset about this? Very, very important. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of effort. Uh, it could be as simple as going from being stressed and uh, worrying about not having something to 
having an attitude of gratitude. You could be thankful for what you have. You know, it's, it's jealousy is, is a stress indicator. So if you're jealous about what someone else has and you feel like you don't have that and so you feel like you're a victim, the, if, you're, if you have gratitude for the simple things like you wake up in the morning and you have your health or you are grateful because you have a meal on your table, you're grateful because you had an opportunity to go for a walk, it's the simple things like that, that mindset is incredibly important to help get you to be able to, you know, to, to start alleviating some of that stress. And how to deal with long-term stress? So during the research for my book, I found that there were seven areas of our life that are the main indicators and main, main places where we manifest our stress from. Because what listeners should understand is that we, you know, most of our stress these days is actually mental. And most of our stress is self-induced, meaning that we do it to ourselves. And in um, my research, I found that that included our livelihood or our career, our conscious mind, or the uh, what I like to call our imagination, which is the, where our inner critic is. It's only 5% of our brain. Our genius, which is our unconscious mind, where um, our memories are stored and our habits are formed and where real change happens. Um, our physical health, the time we have available, our environment and our network of relationships, both personally and professionally. Those seven are the areas where we manifest the stress from. And if we can do whatever we can to keep some balance in those areas, then we will significantly reduce our stress. What implications are there if people cannot overcome this feeling? Well, you know, my example is one. I mean, I ended up in the emergency room. Uh, I have uh, a dear friend of mine um, who I uh, met in high school and we were best friends and we served as each other's uh, best men at our weddings. We supported each other's proud fathers. And he, 30 years after we graduated high school, uh, he found himself very stressed out about his personal and professional life. And he too ended up in the emergency room, uh, but with his situation, it was with intestinal cancer. And the doctors had to remove over two thirds of his intestines. He had to undergo chemotherapy. And he, um, he told me on many, many occasions in between uh, chemotherapy uh, sessions that he was absolutely convinced that stress caused his cancer. And the, it, it has been proven that when we are stressed with negative stress, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the rumi uh, rumination or anxiety, um, what that does is that cause cellular inflammation in our bodies. And that cellular inflammation is what causes chronic disease such as diabetes, cancer, heart disease, et cetera. So your body's gonna tell you well in advance what, you know, that something's wrong listen to your body absolutely listen to your body what is your book about and what is the best that people can learn from it so the book lighten your day fast easy and effective stress relief is uh, a book about uh, over a hundred quick and easy stress relief tips um, that people can use you know and and almost every one of them probably better than 95 percent of them are designed to help you implement it in just one or two minutes. And that's the intent is, you know, instead of reading a 300 page book on um, meditation, for example, or deep, deep breathing, this is for the real world, for those people who are working um, and very busy, don't have a lot of time, and they are they have five minutes before they need to go in to have a difficult conversation or a stressful presentation, for example, and it's intended to help ground them. So it's a it's a quick and easy read, and it, you pick it up, you you pick pick a a, a tool, uh, you try it. If it works, great, continue to use it because when you find a tool that helps you and you use it regularly on a daily basis, the long-term benefits are going to be great, but you have to start today. Um, if it doesn't work, you've only invested a couple of minutes, try another one 
and see if that works. It's, it's a very easy book to use. Perfect. What kind of feedback have you got about the book? Well, uh, I really enjoy hearing about people who send me messages and say that they found a particular technique that really made a difference for them. And that's, that's what I try and do in, in, in this lifetime is I want to make a positive difference uh, to my community. And when somebody tells me that they got benefit from a particular tool, that makes all the difference for me. That's fantastic. So uh, you are kind of like you care about helping other people. Mm -hmm. Correct. How does it make you feel? Feels good. I mean, you know, there's, there's this life is too short to be anything but positive. And if, you know, if we look at just trying to, um, you know, just do everything for ourselves and not be, um, uh, generous with our time, then, you know, at the end of our life, we're going to be looking and we're going to be alone. Uh, instead, I, I, I feel very grateful that I have friends, family and associates that I really enjoy spending time with, communicating with. And that's because, you know, I, I surround myself with others who are very positive. Perfect. I have another question here. Like you mentioned, uh, mainly to overcome stress, uh, we need to have to change our mentality and our thinking. How mm -hmm. can people who haven't achieved something big enough in their life and are not still satisfied about their life develop such kind of mentality mm -hmm. that will enable them to overcome this feeling? That's a, that's a really good question. Well, first of all, you have to realize that uh, being a perfectionist where you are overly critical of yourself is not a healthy situation. You are only judging yourself. And if you judge yourself very harshly and you hold yourself up to such high standards that you can't, you know, achieve them, you're only going to have um, defeat. And it's not a, it's not something that's going to give you a positive uh, step forward. So what you have to do is you have to set the proper expectations for yourself. And uh, one of the things that I like to, to, to recommend to people, we all, we all have dreams. We all have dreams about what we want to accomplish. The problem that we run into is human nature. We, our brains can't go after a dream. But if you turn that dream into a goal, and a goal is really a, a dream with deadlines, timelines on it. If you can do that, then you start setting yourself up for success because you start putting out there, okay, I want to achieve this in one year. I want to achieve this in five years. And you have something to strive for, but it all is based on whatever your dream is, whatever it is that really would help you feel like you have been successful. So what I always encourage people to do is dream about what it is that may, you know, that would, would make you successful in your own mind. Dream about that and then turn that dream into a goal and, uh, and put some deadlines on it and start working towards that goal and always check in on either a weekly or a monthly basis. Have someone uh, that uh, would be willing to hold you accountable for reaching those goals. And you'll be surprised at how quickly you start uh, manifesting and achieving what you want to want, what you're dreaming. Why do our minds and why do we ourselves need evidence always to be able to uh, change our thinking? Well, I think that we need to have evidence because we don't want to waste our time. So, you know, if, if, if you, if somebody is saying something and you don't believe it, you're not going to want to, to try it out yourself. And, you know, I'm the same way. I, I, you know, I need to have some facts behind it. And so when I started experimenting with different tools and techniques, some of them didn't have any kind of, of factual evidence behind them. So I didn't have a lot of, of, of expectations, but I tried them and some of them work, some of them don't, don't. But there are certain techniques that have clear clinical benefits They've been factually there. And depending on who I'm, I'm working with, who I'm talking with, I'll recommend certain ones to them. What kind of techniques could you please explain a little more? Sure. Uh, I think um, 
A good one to to I, I started mentioning about gratitude. That's a that's my favorite actually because uh, my wife and I at the end of each day we have a gratitude exercise where we ask each other what are we grateful for during the day, and that's a great way to end the day on on a very positive note. Another one that is very helpful in this situation that we have with the pandemic, the worldwide pandemic, is to resist or or try not to control what is uncontrollable. So if we think about COVID, there, there are things we can and there are things we cannot control. Unfortunately, human nature is we're going to stress about all aspects of it. So what we have to do is separate out in two different lists, what we can control and what we can't control. What we can't control is a government response to COVID. We can't control whether or not you know, if we have children going to school or not because of the pandemic, we can't even control another person nearby us wearing a mask. So those are things that would go in the uncontrollable list. And then under the controllable list, things like you can wear a mask, you can uh, stay six feet away from uh, another person, you can wash your hands, and you, it's, you're responsible for your own mind, mindset. So those are the things that are under your control. If you can focus your attention on, on any stressful situation, focus it on what you can control and what you can affect change, what ends up happening is your stress goes way, way down because whenever we feel like we're in control, whenever we feel like we can affect change, that's when our stress goes down. If we waste our time worrying about what is uncontrollable, it's wasted energy and we're not going to get anywhere. Yeah, that's so fascinating. Besides your book, what else can people uh, depend on or uh, get recommendations from? Sure. So they don't even have to uh, buy my book. They can uh, just go to my blog and sign up. Uh, I do a weekly uh, stress relief technique uh, each week um, for free. And they can just go and look at the ones that I've already published. There's over a hundred of them there. Um, and they can get a new one each week. Uh, so if you go to my website, petealexander.com forward slash blog, and uh, they can sign up just uh, just their email and they'll get it once a week. Fantastic. Uh, let, let's get, get uh, a look back into your upbringing and the environment, the childhood. How does that affect your writing? Well, so uh, I was I was raised in an extremely dysfunctional childhood. So stress and I have had a very very long history together, and so there were some extremely horrible things that happened to me as a child. And so what, when I wrote the book, uh, part of the content that I put in there was talking about what happened to me as a kid and some of the things that, uh, that affected me as a child carried with me as an adult and added additional stress to, 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 to my life as a young adult. Um, and it wasn't until I ended up in that uh, hospital bed where I realized I got to stop pushing so hard. But it also found, I, I found that there were resources available to me that I may not have found had I not had uh, a supportive uh, group of friends who told me about them. So, you know, I, I think that it's really important for any of your listeners, whenever they're challenged with something that not to think that they're the only ones with that challenge, there is other people who will understand how they feel and to seek out those people. You know, there's usually groups, some, some, some sort of communities, online communities where they can find some support. What else would you like to say, Professor? I just want to thank you for the opportunity to, to be on your show, Noor, and to thank your listeners for uh, listening. And I hope, hope they found uh, something helpful here. It has been amazing talking to you, Professor, today. Thank you so much for your great input. My pleasure.